Welcome back to Fifth Gear. Next, we've got triple Swedish touring car champion Frederik Ekblom versus me. Between us, we've got over 700 horsepower to play with, and it's raining. A lot. I'm going to drive Frederick's £200,000 rear-wheel drive race car while he drives the four-wheel drive road-going version in two track battles. I've got more power, but he's got more skill. We've got no idea which combination will be fastest. The conditions on the track are wet and wild. I can't believe you're going that quick in this weather. And our first challenge, a 200-metre drag race, is filling me with dread. Sensing my fear, Fred has insisted I undergo some touring car tuition before he gives me free reign in his race car. So you've never been a passenger in your own car. No. I've never driven a touring car. I've never driven on this track, and it's raining. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie, my nerves are in tatters. I'm really feeling the pressure, so excuse me while I concentrate. Uh, the start is there. Okay. Okay, so the drill is clutch in, press that button, pull yeah. up. Clutch is very short. Oh, good. Good. I feel like I've just joined the circus and I'm about to tame a lion. You can feel the transmission really shuffling about when it's at low RPM, it doesn't really idle below 2,000. Just wants to swallow as much fuel as possible. I don't know where the, I don't know where the wipers are, Fred. What? I don't know where the wipers are. Yeah. Sorry. The machine feels totally alien. Instead of mastering the controls, I'm completely focused on Fred's earlier essential advice. Don't go in the puddles here. You have to go in the middle. No puddles. Aqua plane, sorry mate. Sorry. I haven't really explored 8,300 RPM and I, I, I can't promise that I will. After a couple of laps of tuition, I'm confident enough to take the car closer to its potential. There goes the shift light. That's 8,300. The brakes are so immediate, really very good, not snatchy. The grip is actually very good, considering how wet it is. Really very reassuring, which is what I want when I'm nervous. Look, Fred, that was epic. Oh, I'm happy we're back in the pits now. Are you? Were you scared? No, no I wasn't scared. You were? I, I was uh, frightened to death. Were you? <laughs> Don't no, say you, that. No, no, you drove really well. I have to say, I was, uh, it was very good. Very Thank good. Thank you. Yeah. Reassuring words, as it's now time for me to race the race car against its road equivalent, driven by Fred. A 200-metre drag race over three rounds. Can Polestar's road legal super saloon defeat its more powerful race car cousin? I don't think it's going to be quite as simple a result as everyone thinks. For a start, you've got four-wheel drive. Yeah, and I do zero to 100 in 4.9 seconds. While if you make a perfect start in my race car, you should be able to do it in three seconds. But you have to control the wheel spin. So, so the start is the key. I need a perfect start to win this. Earlier, I struggled with the aggressive racing clutch and stalling at the start of a race is my biggest fear. Now, this is daunting because I'm rear-wheel drive on a wet day. He's all-wheel drive with launch control. OK, I put it in sport. Launch control is ready. <laughs> oh, bogged down. Happened quickly. He got me off the line with all-wheel drive, and then I came round, and I might have just nosed ahead. The reaction times of the Polestar road car were incredible. The launch control and the four-wheel drive system combined to beat me and my stuttering start off the line. 
but the race car's extra 70 horsepower helped me claw back the lead, and I won by four one hundredths of a second. Yes! I've got to let the clutch cool down every single time I launch. The clutch is very small and actually quite, quite temperamental. Let's go for another drag race. The clutch is horrendous. OK, here we go. Wheel spin, wheel spin. Third gear. Oh, no, he beats me again. Oh, gosh. Wow, unbelievable. Well, this time I'm putting the air conditioning on. I think it's about three or four horsepowers. Right, let's talk it. Third time lucky. No! Yeah! Good start! No! Woo -hoo -hoo! No! Yeah! I mucked that right up! My clutch control let me down, and the S60 road car showed its pace. <laughs> hey, I don't know who won. Who won? You beat me two times. Did I? First you take my car and then you beat me. <laughs> I thought you were nice. Hey, that was close. But that, that weighs 600 odd kilos more. It fits five adults in complete comfort. That, it really went. Yeah, it's fantastic. And especially the first 20 meters is really, it's you like a off. rocket. Yeah, you had me on, on every time on yeah, the start pretty yeah. much. Hey, it was absolutely slashing down. Yeah. I, I, thought... I forgot to put the wipers on on the last run. I couldn't see a damn thing. You sound like a real racing driver now because they all usually have a lot of excuses. <laughs> <laughs> it's power versus skill. We're finding out if the combination of rookie in a race car is faster than racing driver in a road car with two of the most extreme Volvos you've ever seen. The conditions on the Swedish under stop circuit are extreme. It's rained heavily, so it's been hard for me to learn how to drive Fred's race car. I don't know where the wipers are, Fred. Despite never having driven a touring car before, I managed to take Frederick's race machine to overall victory in a 200-metre drag race. I might have just nosed ahead. But we've been blown away by the performance of the road legal S60 Super Saloon. Now it's time to test them both over a flying lap. Right now, Fred is trying to set a best lap in the standard Polestar car around the Anderstorp circuit, the North Loop. Flat out, close to 200 kilometres. Once he's got a, a lap time that he's happy with, he's going to come in, I'm going to go out and try and beat him. But the difference is, I'm going to be in his race car. The time to beat is 59.6 seconds. Before I try and smash it in Fred's 200 grand race weapon, he's showing me the racing line. We're in the, the production car of what, of what you race. This S60 has been fine-tuned by Polestar, Volvo's racing division. It's got faster gear shifts than the standard S60, whilst the all-wheel drive software puts more emphasis on rear torque, giving it a more rear-wheel drive character. Take your braking point into the corner, use the banking, and then get quite early on the power. The grip of this car is, is stunning. They've tweaked the four-wheel drive to suit a more aggressive driving style and, and you know, it's still a, a family car which you can take, to the, take the kids to school in. Yeah. Here, it's uh, second gear. You can cut the curbs quite hard here. If you go a little bit wide, that's okay. And then you flow outside to the outer apex and sometimes you can even go outside of that curbs, but not today when it's raining because then they're, they're really slippery. I mean, this is almost Volvo's answer to Audi's S4, for example. Loads of turbocharged grunt, four-wheel drive, amazing traction, even in this kind of horrible weather. Now it's time for me to set my own lap in the race car. In my test runs earlier, I wasn't exactly confident and struggled to push the car to the limit. Yet somehow I had to pull everything together and beat a lap time of 59.6 seconds. And just to heap on the pressure, Fred would be climbing on board next to me. Good. Uh, that clutch is not my best friend. Oh, it's not mine either, sorry. 
for him, you know, I, I, I can only imagine if you, you know you don't know the track, you don't know the car, you have a lot of power, and then uh, you know a lot of rain. It's it's, it's not a good combination. So uh, he, he was shaken, you know. I can see that before the start for sure. <laughs> Things didn't go well on my opening lap as I approached the Nora corner. Just keep staying in position until the car is on track. Wait until the car is on track. It makes it back up. Huh? God, that bug. I went in a little bit quicker than normal and <laughs> right out. <laughs> Sorry. No, it was fun, you know, have a little spin, end up in the grass, it's no problem, you know. We didn't hit anything, nobody got hurt, and, and uh, the car is okay, so any time, no problem. With a little bit of help, we were on the move again. I'm just glad I didn't damage the car. Okay, Johnny, we are getting close to um, start and finish line, so uh, get prepared. Okay. Man, I, I, was, I was seriously nervous. I was concentrating so hard. I was really gripping the wheel very hard. I wasn't talking a lot at all. OK, let's go. Remember your lines now. I wanted to make sure I didn't brake too late and get the car unsettled and really twitchy. It's mid-engined, it's quite well balanced, but, you know, it's still terrible rain, lots of standing water on the track. Well, take care of the puddles now. Floor it. On this track, it's quite a long corner, so you need to really be very gentle, and I think that uh, sort of suits his driving style. That's good. That's good. Keep the line. Apply power. Flat. Good. Fred in the passenger seat was fantastic. Very cool, very calm, very encouraging. Now use the reps. All the way. Good time, yeah? I clocked to one minute and one second dead. 1.4 seconds behind Fred's road car time. This thrilling experience has taught me that in treacherous conditions, skill and grip are far more important than power. The fast but rock-steady Polestar road car also shows that it's time to take Volvo seriously when it comes to four-wheel speed. It's more controllable than the race car. It felt as fast as I could go, given the amount of time I've had on this track in that car. It was, uh, it was wetter when he was out driving and uh, he was a few seconds off me, but uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I, he did a good job.